everybody. Welcome to Sojourns. This is Chris. Today we have our sew along video for the Taurus tie top. That's the pattern that you see here. Last week we did the introduction where we downloaded our pattern, we printed out our pattern, and cut our fabric. So today we're going to begin with the start of cutting our fabric. You will see all of my fabric pieces lined up at the start, and then I'm going to take you through, one by one, the construction of the Taurus tie top. Feel free to watch the entire video if you want to get a feel for how this is constructed. And I do encourage you to read through the tutorial first. And then if you'd like to start, you can look at the first step, sew that along with me, stop the video, go to the next part, and go to the next part. I've left eight days for you to sew up your pattern. And then if you'd like, you can email me a picture of your finished Taurus tie top. And if you'd like to have that put up in a little montage on my next video, I'd love to show off all the makers and all of their beautiful finished patterns. And I even have prizes to give away, like I had mentioned last week. All of the information is in the description box. Uh, if you have yet to download your pattern, it's not a problem. This so long is going to stay up there. I'll have a link to last week's video in the description box. So you can go there, you can get your pattern, you can follow along. Thanks for joining me. Let's get started with our sew along of the Taurus Tie Top by Winterwear Designs. All right, so here we have our cut out pattern pieces all laid out for you. I mentioned before we won't be showing the actual pattern pieces, um, but here are my fabric pieces cut out. So here I have the front cut one. Back here we have two lower sleeves because we are doing the bishop sleeve version. Those are cut on the fold. Back here is one side tie with the stretch going in this direction. We have our side piece insert. We have our back cut on the fold. This is our neck band because we are doing the knit neck band version and two cuffs cut on the fold. Pay careful attention in the tutorial. I was able to fit this entire front piece on my fabric because I have 60 inch wide fabric. If you cannot, especially if you're using a woven, we're using a knit for this sew along. Then what will happen is pay very very close attention. It will have, these are actually two pattern pieces that you tape together before you cut. However, if you cannot fit this section on your fabric, you will add a seam allowance here, add a seam allowance to this part, and you will cut them in two different cuts and sew together at that seam allowance. This is the side tie. So when you tie it here, that seam will be hidden in the tie. You, you will not see it. That's how I did the original one that I showed you in the beginning one with the stars on it. Make sure you're marking all of your markings. Make sure you mark the top of this insert piece. That's really, really important. I've marked it with Taylor's chalk on the back. You'll need to know the top of that and mark all of your notches. So these are all the pattern pieces I have cut out in French Terry, and we'll be back to start our sew along. Here on page 16 of the tutorial, and the first thing we are going to do is our side tie prep, step one. So I have the side tie. I have it folded right sides together, and I've pressed it and clipped it along the raw edge, and I'm going to serge that edge. You can use a sewing machine, I'll be using the serger. Look at this. Have you seen one of these measuring gauges? This is really handy. Each area or each side has a different measurement on it. It's two-sided, super handy. I actually have mine attached to an elastic cording, which I have attached down here. Let me move my thing to my mat. That way I can just grab it when I need to. And here you see the 3 eighths mark. The tourist top uses a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we're here at the serger at our fourth thread overlock. So I'm going to take this gauge, I'm just gonna show you how to measure your seam allowance on a serger. 
and you go over to the second needle, which is your left needle, and you'll see that the 3 8 inch seam allowance runs right along this edge of the presser foot. So it's perfect. It'll just skim off something here. So that's what we're gonna be doing. That's where we're gonna line it up. So here I have the side tie, and I'm gonna set it up here at our 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, which is right there. And it's just going to shave the tiniest bit off. I have my differential feet at 1.3 because I do have a stretchy fabric and I want to keep that from being wavy. Here we go. Removing our clips as we go. I'm using black thread here. Contrasting thread always shows up better on the video. Um, you certainly can use red. I usually prefer to use matching thread, but really, if you just have a couple of colors, use black for your darks, use white for your lighter. Gray is an excellent neutral to use, but I'm doing this so that you can see it really well. You certainly can do this on your sewing machine. On this particular piece, you're fine to just use a straight stitch because this is not going to be stretching at all. This is your tie. You're simply gonna tie it and it's going to hang. surging off, trying to keep my hands out of the way is sometimes a little harder. Okay, got that first piece all surged off. Our side tie piece has now been surged and I brought the serge seam to the middle as per the tutorial. And now that edge that was a funny cut now lines up diagonally here. And now we're just gonna go over to the sewing machine and sew down this edge. Then we are going to turn it right side out and press it. And then we're going to set this piece aside for now. Here is where we begin to work on our front bodice. It's a very large piece because of the tie extension. So I'm doing my best to get it all in on the camera. So I have it laid right side up right side up and then we are going to fold it from the bottom to the top over onto itself like I've done here so that you are folding this long extension tie in half and those raw edges will meet up and here you want to make sure you have your markings marked one dot here another dot here on the pattern page and I just took my tailor's chalk and I just showed you how we're going to be sewing we're gonna begin at this dot. I will be using my sewing machine on this. Begin at this dot, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You'll sew to this point, leave your needle in, pit it, and then sew down the long edge. After you sew down this long edge, we'll do the exact same thing we did with the side tie. We'll just fold it over so that seam is in the center. These Diagonal cuts will line up diagonally. We'll sew it the exact same way. We begin with that first dot right under the needle. So I've sunk the needle. I'm sewing with a straight stitch and I'm going to sew down 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance till I get to this point, pivot, and then we'll continue down. I am trying to keep my hands out of the way, but I'm using a tripod today and hopefully you'll be able to see what you need to see. Go slowly, and my machine will backstitch in the beginning. I can already see that that head of my pin is going to be in my way. I'm going to remove it now. I'm going to this dot. I'm 
raise my presser foot and pivot. that a little bit right here into that dot and then we will turn this so this seam is in the center we will sew when this seam comes to the center we will then get our diagonal line here we will sew across here and then we turn it inside out just like we did in the previous step So all you're going to do is you're gonna reach in here and we're just gonna turn that side tie right side out. I try to get as much as I can in one fell swoop. And then we wanna poke out those corners. I like to use this. This is a plastic tube turner. You put your fabric in here and turn it. The reason I like to use this is see how rounded it is? I, this one's even better. It was a set of two, but see, it's soft, it's rounded, and it's plastic. I don't like when people use skewers from the kitchen because they can poke through your fabric, and this French terry is pretty delicate. So I'm just going to reach in here with this and poke out those corners. And you can use what you like to use, just don't use your scissors or anything that'll poke the fabric okay. through. So those are your shoulders and that's your neckline. So here's your tie. We're gonna be working in this area here. Take the tie you just turned right side out and just move it out of the way to the other side. Now we're going to take this piece, the side piece insert that we cut one of and marked the top. That's going to fit into this section. So find the top which you marked with your marking implement. And this is the top here, the top half of the bodice. There's a mark here and there's a dot under here that's just beyond where we finished sewing here. Take this up, line it up right sides together with the top, marking this notch, matching this notch with this notch. Some's going to hang off so that when you flip it over, it'll match up on the seams. So this is actually, my notch is actually over here a little bit. There we go. And we're going to sew from this notch to this point right here. We're going to sew from here to here. So let me just pin that real quick. And I'm going to show you the second step as well. So when I'm at the sewing machine, I can just sew both. Let me do this because I want to flip it. So we're sewing to this dot here. It's on the other side. After you sew that, then what you're going to do is this will be the bottom, okay? You're going to flip this down like this. It's gonna be sewn there. You're going to flip up the bottom and match these up. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to sew from that dot to the dot over here. So I'll sew this, I'll flip it over like I showed you and also sew this at the sewing machine. Here at the sewing machine, I've turned my garment over so that the triangle piece is on the bottom. This is the triangle piece. We previously pinned it so that I can see the notches on the wrong side of the bodice. So I have my needle here, I'm gonna sink it, lined at the notch with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to sew that down into this notch right here. My stitches will lock in the beginning and the end and you wanna do that. We're just using a straight stitch here. There isn't any pull on this. It doesn't need to have a stretch stitch. We have our seam sewn. 
sewn here and I just wanted to show you again how this lines up before I do sew it. I thought you might want to see that again. So you'll flip down what we've just sewn right in here and now we're just going to sew these. Just flip the bottom bodice up and then you'll have access to this. You'll line up those notches just like we did and sew to the points. So here you have that triangle piece sewn in beautifully. Now you're going to take that original side tie piece that we worked on first, that we sewn together, turned right side out and pressed. Now you're going to take right side of the bodice, right side of the tie, and you're going to put it, there is a notch marking here and here, and you're just going to line that up, which fits right in that triangle piece and just baste that. With our side tie now basted on, and see it's basted on right here, we're going to flip it back again. Now we're going to sew the front bodice and the back bodice together at the shoulder seams and down the hem and down the side seams. So therefore I want to stabilize those shoulder seams. I'll show you what I like to use to stabilize shoulder seams. This is clear elastic. Clear elastic is different than regular elastic as it's not very stretchy. You can see it's not very stretchy at all. But what you want to do is you want to take it and sort of exercise it once, just kind of stretch it out a little bit, and then you're ready to work with it. If you don't have clear elastic, you can easily use any piece of woven fabric, a small bit, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch wide, of twill tape, leftover bias tape, the selvage of a woven fabric, anything like that, anything to stabilize the shoulder seam. And let me just show you how we're going to do that. So I like to take these two ties and just gently tie them together so that they stay out of the way and don't flip into the side seams. My back bodice is facing up. My front bodice is, is down there, but they are right sides together. When you stabilize the shoulders, you'll want to put your stabilizing elastic or woven piece on your back your bodice. Elastic. Here's my clear elastic and I've cut it the length of my shoulder seam. I've actually cut it about a half inch shorter. I like to keep it away from the side seams because it gets really bulky. So I've cut it a little bit shorter and it just needs... On your foot, on the foot that I am using, which is my standard foot for my Baby Lock Triumph, there are two slots in this foot. There's a larger one here for cover stitch that goes in front of the cover stitch needles. And there's this little bit smaller slot here. I have my elastic fed right through that slot under my needles and then I sunk my needles and I just one stitch just sunk my needles and lifted them so now that elastic is secure now that my back bodice is up under my presser foot my needles are down we're just going to serge this using our 3 8 7 inch seam allowance I am not going to be pulling on this elastic at all it's going to feed nicely through like I said it's going to be short of the shoulder seam but it'll do the idea and this will just sew this right into the shoulder seam for us. I might hold it to guide it, but I'm not putting any pressure on it. you can see that there we have that clear elastic sewn right into the shoulder seam I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other shoulder with both of our shoulder seams sewn together with our stabilizer in it we now have our side seams are clipped or pinned we're going to sew down the curve of the dolman sleeve and down to the hem on both sides 
Be very careful when you're doing the side with the side tie that you do not catch your side tie. I've left it knotted like we did in the previous step. That will keep it out of the way. But just as you're going through your sewing machine or serger, just make sure that it's flat and you're not catching anything there. I'm going to be serging. If you're going to use your sewing machine on this step, I encourage you to use a stretch stitch. So you'd be using your zigzag stitch. I always like to start directly under the needles if I can. So I have the needles sunk down into the fabric. I'm starting at the edge of the sleeve. So we're gonna go around that little dolman curve and I'm gonna show you how we negotiate that on our serger. I have my differential feed set at 1.3 because I have a very stretchy fabric. <clears throat> so for the first inch, it's pretty much a straight line. And then you see we go around this curve and I've cut it a tad uneven because my fabric is stretchy, but we'll take care of that. When you go around a curve like this, you need to fool your serger into thinking this is a straight line. So as our knife approaches that curve, I'm going to straighten my fabric and I might have to coax that just like that. Watching that I do not get folds under the foot. You'll have folds on this side, but as long as they're not under the foot, you're fine. And then you're gonna feed it through like this straight line. Okay, let's give that a go. And now my knife has reached the curve, even though my needles have not. So I'm going to turn my needle and put it in to keep the fabric in place. I'm going to turn my fabric so that I can begin to feed this through in a straight line. Here we go. And now we can just continue to sew down the side. sleeve. Now if you are just doing the short sleeve version at this point you will just hem your sleeve. In the bishop sleeve I'm doing the full length bishop sleeve. I'm going to show you how we deal with that but first I want to tell you that oops I made a little mistake but then I realized that this will give me the opportunity to show you something because we all make sewing mistakes. When I first made this pattern I did the short sleeve so kind of just working off of that since I had already sewn it, I was on autopilot and I sewed up the side seams thinking I was going to do the short sleeves and then just hem the cuff. But then I realized, wait a minute, I'm doing the bishop sleeve on this one. Or you'll want to attach your sleeve, your bishop sleeve, before you sew up those side seams. All is not lost, simple fix without unpicking the entire thing. So here's what we have. So I had you sew down the side seams. And then I realized we need to sew these bishop sleeves on in the flat. So all I did was unpick to the curve. And if you do not know how to unpick serger seams, I thought, well, here's a perfect opportunity to show you that because that may be something you're unfamiliar with. So I prepared a sample here and I've done some contrasting thread. I threaded my loopers in black thread both the upper and the lower looper. And I threaded my two needles, because we're doing a four thread. One is in hot pink, and one is in this chartreuse color, so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. So how you unpick a four thread overlock? Working from the reverse side, you can see the needle threads and the looper threads. So what you wanna do, I'm gonna fold this over to make it easier to grab. You're going to reach under this first needle thread, red there, pink, and then you're going to reach under the second needle thread right there, and you're just going to cut them. I'm working in the middle just because it was easier for me on camera. And then I'm gonna come down here. You can do one inch, two inch, three inches, four inches, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm just gonna come down here quite a bit, and I'm going to do the same thing. Under the needle thread, pick that up, and under the needle thread, there we go, and cut it. Okay, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna pull in the looper thread because that will just tighten your loopers here and then you'll have a big mess. 
So after you do that, I'm gonna come along and pick out one or two more of these needle threads. And like I said, I, I did this in color so that you can see it. It really does sink in this French terry. But there you go. So I pulled out that one and I'm going to go ahead and pull out this one as well, which is red. All right. So I've loosened those two needle threads. Now what you're going to do is just pull out the needle thread. So it's going to pull out from here and from where I started, there's one. And here's the second one. And I just try it with this hand. Pull that out and now your loopers will just fall off. And you just go ahead and do that every, I did it about two inches, but you can do three or four. But look at that, they completely just fall out. So that. So I have unpicked a little bit here, just so I can get this sleeve to flatten out and this will work. But I encourage you to do this before you sew up the side seam and I'm sorry about that. It was just on autopilot. So back to our bishop sleeve. Here I have the bishop sleeve. The top is wider than the bottom. And I've run a basting stitch along the full length of the top. And at the bottom, the tutorial will tell you, mark two inches in on either side and run a basting stitch. The basting stitches are run at a quarter of an inch in. And now we are going to gather those basting stitches to fit our sleeve. So you should have your bodices in the flat. That means the side seams have not been sewn up yet. It will make it a little easier to do, but I can still do this no problem. Okay, so if you've done that, you can do this too. Find your notch. And we're going to clip that. It's right sides together. There is no front or back of these sleeves because this sleeve starts down after the shoulder. There isn't a shoulder, it's a dolman sleeve. If this were a set-in sleeve, you would have a front and a back. You don't on this. And then you're going to take the end of the sleeve and the end of the arm side, and you're just going to clip those together. That's why it's easier to do it in the flat, but having opened that, it's not a problem. And then you're going to do it again with this side. And there isn't a lot to gather, but now you're going to grab the bobbin thread. It's always easier to gather the, with the bobbin thread than it is the top thread. So I'm going to get my clip off my threads here. That's why a pin may be better there. You're just going to pull these gathering stitches, this thread, until you get the, the seams, until you get the edges to line up. And it's not a lot that you're gathering, but you want them to be one-to-one. -one. So you do it from one side to the center, and from the other side to the center. And then I'll do it again over here. And here we have it pinned on from edge to edge. So now we have our sleeve pinned on edge to edge. I'm going to go ahead and do it with the other sleeve. Then I'm going to serge that on. And then at this point, you would put your sleeves together and sew down from the edge of the sleeve to where your cuff would be all the way down to the hem. In. So here I have my lower bishop sleeve surged onto the arm side. Now you would have done it correctly and not had your side seam sewn yet. But if you do, we figured out a way to work with it, no problem. Now what I've done here is I've pinned that sleeve together. You will sew from the sleeve edge all the way up and all the way down your side seam because remember your side seam wasn't sewn yet. I've already done that. I've surged it all the way down. You will then take your cuff pieces, here's just one, and you'll sew down the edge of the cuff so that the stretch is going this way. After you surge or sew that, you will put this together because you want the stretch to go around your wrist. And you'll just put your raw edges together. When it comes to these seams, I like to put one on one side and one on the other. Nest those seams and just clip those and hold those raw edges together so you have a cuff. Raw edges will match. You'll take your cuff, slide it over your sleeve, 
and match the seams together. Just push it in one direction. I'm going to gently gather this sleeve to fit the cuff. So you'll just, and it's not a lot of gathering, but you'll pull those gathering stitches, there we go, and even them out, and then just clip there so that they meet up and they match up. And you'll do the same on this side. I'm gonna have to take this clip off because this is a small area and we wanna get it under the presser foot. So my hand's gonna be in the way here, I'm sorry. Let me just get this under the presser foot. There we go. And then I'm going to lower my foot and sink my needles. You have to do it very slowly. It's a very small area. So I'm gonna remove this clip here. And these other clips wanna get in the way and these pins, so working very slowly. Now that you've gathered and matched it up, you aren't stretching anything. So that's good. We're gonna to start to surge, watching these things here that they don't interfere. A little tricky. If you are using your sewing machine, you'll be using your, your stretch stitch, your zigzag stitch. Do it a little at a time and then we have to pull a little bit forward and it certainly can be done. And a little bit more. I'm gonna take this clip out now. And I'm also going to remove this pin, making sure I remove the top part away. Now we're getting to that gathering. Remove that clip. Um, forgive me if my hands have been in the way. It's a very tight area. All right, now we're getting back to the beginning. So I wanna take these tails and throw them that way to the right. And I'm going to let the knife take care of that. As soon as I see my knife cut those serger tails, I am going to slide this cuff just to the left of the knife here. I'm going to go over my stitches a half an inch or an inch. I'm going to sink my needles, turn my fabric 90 degrees, and then serge off. So I like to hold it so I know that it's been cut off. And now I'm going to slide to the left back over that a little bit. Needle, needles are down, foot is up. Turning 90 degrees, put my foot down and surge off. Gonna leave some tail here. See how nicely that went over? And now I'm going to take my large needle. And I don't know if you've ever seen me do this before. Slide this through those serger stitches. Take the edge of the tail and slip it through that very large needle. And then I like to pull this, give that a little tug, and then pull those stitches through. The other stitches, it's now in here, it's secure. You can cut it right off. Here is our cuff that we just surged on, so I'm just gonna flip it out. And you see it matches up beautifully there. And we've got our nice finished edge. There should not be any basting stitches to unpick because we put those at a quarter inch and we sewed with three eighths of an inch, so they would have gotten enclosed in our seam allowance. Do that to both sleeves. Now we're going to deal with the neckline. I am using the banded version. Here's the band. I cut it according to the cut chart in the pattern and I've sewn it together on the short end. Two short ends together, press it wrong sides together, which is what I've done here. Now, I have a video, a comprehensive video on knit neck bands. It has a lot of the information. I go slowly, I take you through how I quarter everything. I'm going to link that in the description box so I don't have to recreate that here, but I'll just say some quick things here. I've quartered a neckline. Remember the quarter points will fall forward most times of the shoulder, it is not the shoulder point. I show you how to figure that out in the video, the knit neckband video. And I've quartered the neckband. Now we're just going to attach this. 
Our neckband is pinned at all the quarter points, and as you see, we'll have to stretch that band to fit that so it'll lay nice and flat. And let's go serge that on or sew that on. If you're going to use your sewing machine, use a stretch stitch. And for my serger, I'll be using my four thread overlock. To serge the neckband on, I prefer to work with the, the neckband on top so that I can stretch it to fit and I can see what I'm doing. This particular knit that I'm using is very curly on the edges. Now, some people like to baste the edge of their neckband together first before they put it on. I don't really care for that because I find it difficult to stretch it. So I'm just going to go slowly and make sure that it's not curling on me and it's going to take a little bit of doing and you could use wonder tape uh, or some more pins or whatever, but I'm just going to wing it. So I'm going to stretch it a little bit and serge. And then I'm going to stretch it to this next point, making sure that I'm uncurling my neckband. All right, we're coming back around to our neckline. And there's really not a whole lot of stretching we need to do on this little portion, but just like before, I'm holding the tail. Now that that is cut off, I'll just slide to the left, sink my needles. And surge off. I'll tuck those tails in just like I did before. Here's our neckband. I'll just go over to the iron and give it a good press down. If you like to top stitch that neckband, you can. I usually do. I'm not going to do it with this particular fabric because it is so soft and the loops are on this French terrier on the outside, it can tend to pull and I don't like top stitching with this particular fabric. Well, we're almost finished with our tourist tie top and it's getting very excited. We're at the hem. This is the final thing that we do. So I have taken and pressed this hem up five eighths of an inch. Using the measuring gauge, you put this on five eighths. You measure this up to your needle thread and you turn it up five eighths of an inch, press it and pin it or clip it, whatever you prefer. The tutorial may say three quarters of an inch, do it a quarter of an inch and then turn it up again a half inch. I use the standard five eighths of an inch, sometimes one inch. Always serge the edge of my fabrics, whether I'm doing knit or woven, it makes for a neater edge and easier to line up when you're hemming actually. So let's go over to the cover stitch I'll be using a wide cover stitch. You can certainly sew this on your sewing machine using a twin needle. So this is the fabric guide. I'm gonna be using it on the Triumph and cover stitch. You can use it on the Ovation, perhaps, I think just the Ovation and Triumph. But I know that other machine manufacturers have fabric guides as well. So if you have one, I'm gonna show you how to set it up and use it. Let me put this aside and we're gonna come here and I'm gonna show you how we set this up. Your fabric guide will come with, this is your foot, very heavy, it's the fabric guide. And you have in your with your machine these two screws, guide screws. Also with the fabric guide came this piece of paper. And it has a circle at the top and a red line. So what you'll wanna do is get your needle set, I'm using a wide cover stitch, and position that circle right over the O1 needle, the left needle, or the C1, it's cover stitch. And then down, lining it up with the groove on the toe. Okay, I've already put one of these screws in. There are two screws on your bed. There's actually four, but you're using the top two. I'm going to swing this around here. And what you wanna do is take that red line and line it up with the zero on your fabric guide. Okay, and I can't quite see that. All right, now I'm gonna tighten this one here. 
and then I'll try to do this left-handed. Put the second one in and tighten it. So you can move this back and forth before you get those set screws in. So now this is positioned. All right, let me lift my presser foot and take this out of the way. All right, let's take that out of the way. So we're all done with that. That's just how you line it up. Like I just mentioned, I've used a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm going to, this locks in here. I'm going to unlock it here and slide it down to the 5 8 of an inch mark and lock it in place. And now this to here is your hem. So let me go ahead and get our top and we'll set it up under the cover stitch. All right, so here I have my pressed seam. And you can see this is the wrong side of the fabric. This is the right side of the fabric. But I just wanna show you how this lines up. So I've taken the edge, the hemmed edge, the pressed edge, and I put it right along here. And as I go and feed this through, then this will hem right where I want it. If I wanted to do a reverse cover stitch, that is if I wanted the looper threads to show on the right side, which is actually a really cute look and sometimes you want that, I would just sew just like this. But I am going to turn it around so that my needle threads are on the front like usual. Okay, so now I can just, just to show you how it lines up and what it'll look like. Now I'm gonna turn it over. I never hem starting at the seam. So I am on the back of the bodice, forward of the seam. So all I'm doing is putting this through and I'm lining it up right with my fabric guide so I don't have to do any work here. That's going to sew beautifully. So I've got the wide cover stitch in, like I said, we're cover stitching in the round. And all I have to do is follow the fabric guide. So let's do that. taking these needles or pins out along the way. I actually had it pinned underneath, so I have to pull out a few before that. You're just gonna continue to do your hem all the way around. When I get around to the beginning, I'm just gonna go all the way around. When I get around to the beginning, I'll show you how we we'll end our cover stitch in the round. Here we have come around to the beginning. Here is where we started. These are our needle threads and underneath, underneath is our chain looper. When you begin your cover stitch in the round, those threads lock in, so no fear of that. And now we just wanna trim those. I leave them on until I get back around so I make sure that I see it. So I'm clipping those off and I'm gonna go underneath here and clip that one off as well. Okay. And while you're here, let me just show you, look at this beautiful coverage right there to the edge, which is exactly where we want that. The hemline works perfect. The hem gauge works perfect. Okay, now I have a clear cover foot on and I really like that because it enables me to see exactly where I started so I can try to go exactly over that. I'm gonna go over that about three quarters of an inch and I'm going to try to line up my beginning needle threads right with the markings on this toe. So I'm always watching the toe, not the needle. Okay, and I'm kind of working from my other side, so I'll do the best I can here. Now I'm watching that go right over there. And I've gone over that enough. So here's how you end your cover stitch in the round. My needles are down, I'm going to Raise my needles by turning the hand wheel towards me. Always turn it towards you, highest position. And then I raise my foot. I'm going to use this little set screwdriver that comes with my machine, but this can be your serger tweezers or it can be what a, a hem gauge, whatever. And I'm going to release some tension here on those threads. And the reason I can do that is because my foot is up. If my foot were down, all of these tension discs would be locked and I couldn't do that. So I've just released some tension. I'm putting my screwdriver behind my needles. So it's under the foot, but behind my needles. And I'm just going to pull those threads forward. I like to go out to about the bed and then just clip them. 
Okay, now those are your needle threads and they're cut. So now what you're going to do is I'm going to take my hand here. I'm going to pull this to the back and to the left. When I do that, those needle threads will pull underneath the garment to the hem side and we can tie them off. So I'm going to pull back and to the left. And then I like to do this. I like to take my hand and my finger and I like to put it on the needle threads when I get to about here. If I were to pull this a little harder, I might get a bit of tunneling at the end and it's not a big deal, but if we can prevent it, why not? Put my fingers on here just to keep it from tunneling. And this is where I started and stopped. This is where I stopped, excuse me. And I'm gonna pull it out. Now you see this thread? This is your chain looper. That's the one we haven't snipped yet. I'm gonna snip it to the same length. And now, all I have to do is tie these threads off. I'll give those two or three ties and clip it and we're done. So I'm gonna have Mark pull back a little and I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna show you. Here's our hem. I'm gonna tie that off. We are done. Now, all we have to do is try it on. Let's do some modeling and let's show off our new Taurus tie tops. You did it. Congratulations on completing your tourist tie top in our first sew along here at Sojourns. I am so tickled with this one. I love the long sleeves. I love it in French terry. I feel warm, I feel cozy. I hope you're just as thrilled with yours. So make sure you complete your tourist tie top in the time frame that's in the description box. Email me with your finished tops. I can't wait to show them off. Thanks for joining me on this really fun sew along. I'll see you next time. Until then, happy sewing.